I'll have Tom remove the painting, sir, as you requested. Who is he? Sir William Fairfield. Known to us all as Boots. Wife brought this house into the family. Much good it did her, poor thing. Why? It's not very pleasant. Her baby drowned. Not the most cheerful of women, is she? But she's no fool. More important, we can trust her. <laughs> I had no idea how little there was left. Ten spoon. Four soup plates. Hmm. Let's eat in the garden. What? Three croquet. Croquet in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps she stores things from outside. No, wait, look, look. Just grab three cracked plates. <laughs> I was never good at the pen, ma'am. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Mrs. Tarnley. I assure you we were laughing only at there being so few things left. I don't know what you mean by left. It's not a woman keeps things longer than I do, and I was never counted careless. Oh, but we did not think you broke them. No, of course not, Mildred. We were only laughing at our own foolishness. Now, please don't take offence. Oh, I take no offence at foolishness, sir. I only worry at the peril of indulging it in this house. <laughs> what does she mean, Peril? Oh, she's been here so long she resents the intrusion, that's all. <laughs> Did you think the squire will come? No. Come here. <laughs> Mildred's mutton was always something. It's wonderful to be able to eat as you like, do as you like. It's not like the hall, is it? Have you been back? Oh, yes. He, uh, he doesn't talk much. But the lawyer's told him he can't unsettle the place, so you've no fear there. The trouble is what he'll do next. The old beast is becoming unmanageable. Thank heavens he doesn't suspect your part in it. Lily! Now this is a fine meal. I'm sorry if I startled you before. You've just seen your horse, sir. Lily, do you want... do you ride? Well, no, no, there's, a, there's a, a fine little mare I passed on my way here that would suit you very well. <gasps> Lily? <laughs> you know, he should not be allowed to treat us like this. One day I may not stay my hand. There's something wrong, Harry. It's been haunting me. Will it never stop? Can you be certain? The old soldier. And now I think it's coming here. But what could be done? There's nothing on Earth. Unless there's some way. I have your coat. Thank you. Harry was just taking his leave. to be back. Sorting out debt is the most miserable business. Yes, I agree. It's a horrid story. Tarnley should know better than to recount ancient gossip from long before she was ever here. I tell you, Alice, if the Fairfields had committed half the iniquities people imagine of us, we'd be a good deal wealthier. Charlie, I still don't understand why I'm not allowed to go to Dorling. 
and I heard you speak of something the other night. I want to ask you, is it someone to whom you owe money? The old soldier? What? What are you talking about? That name. You said it to your brother. I don't recall, but it was of no importance. It was my brother who was in the army, as you know perfectly well. Of course, but I... Please, not feel you have to eavesdrop on conversations about debt. God knows, Alice, I'll give you any money I have. Tea. No tea! And if you're harboring them here. Sir, for I just said that you were here months back, and so you were, sir. And <laughs> nobody but Master Harry had visited us for months. That were true, too. Well, thank God I had wind of it. Thank you, Lily. Yes, thanks, Lily. I didn't believe his temper would last as long as this. Oh, Harry, once he hears of Alice's condition, surely he'll change. He is bad tempered and proud, but he's not mad. Well, till the baby comes, I suppose you must say we are in France. And you'll deal with that other business? Mm -hmm. Oh, darling, I know what a strain this has all been for you. Please don't wait on us if you wish to go on. I'm sure you know what I wish. To be.
be away from here. Even just for a short time. The squire's gone back now. A visit anywhere. Where? I do not care. Bedlam, perhaps, for I know I will go mad if I am shut up any longer. Unless, perhaps, you could visit Harry's godson. Charles. He said before you came down that he looks in on the boy tomorrow in Dorley. Godson? Harry, why did you not tell me? His mother may even be of some use to us when the time comes. I would love to go and see him. Harry, please. Consider the danger of the squire's spies. The place is not much to see. Harry, I... we'll take that risk. You must do this for us, please. Charles, have you done? Dulcie and I were just... What's the matter? Nothing's the matter. I told you there was work to do. Is there news? News, no. Another bill, of course. And I'll have to leave on business at once, as I feared. At once, but... I would like to finish in peace, if you don't mind, Alice. Fire seems to have gone out. Charles? Charles? Charlie?
see him, can't you? I know you can. The fever's almost left him. Oh, thank God. But I'm afraid he's not out of danger. You must be his nurse. He's talking more now, and he needs you beside him. Oh, I must go to him directly. Did you have a nightmare, ma'am? I'll fetch you some soup and bread. It is three o'clock. But why are you up? It is afternoon, ma'am. I've been sleeping. Oh, what use am I if I sleep? You've stayed up for nights. Now, take this. Holly. Please open it. This her. The woman who hurt you. Oh, my God. 